Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about um, line integrals or do an example of line integrals and certainly line integrals can get pretty tricky so one example is not going to cover all the cases but hopefully at least it will get you started. So the idea is we're going to integrate some uh, function of x and y um, over some curve C and you can think about basically your curve C um, as being the blue line here in my picture. So there's some curve and what we're going to do is imagine you know the green part being the function that's kind of above the curve we're finding you know the space between the the curve and or excuse me the space between the function and the curve um, just like normal um, I mean you can almost imagine that this little um, this curve it's almost like a curtain you know and we're finding the area underneath the curtain Okay, so a curtain is not nice and flat, it may bend and move around. So, I don't know, maybe that's at least one intuitive idea to what, what you're doing here. Um, and it says what we have to do is we have to parametize um, our variable x and y. Often you'll do it in terms of some new parameter t, um, but it depends. Um, you, can, you can do different, different things in different situations. So here's the basic formula. Notice it involves the um, arc length formula for parametric curves there at the end. So here's uh, an example that, that I thought was pretty, pretty decent. Um, it says we're going to integrate the, uh, the function xy to the fourth over this curve c. And c is going to be the right half of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 16. <clears throat> okay, so x squared plus y squared equals 16. That's just a circle of radius 4, so that's what I have here. But again, we're just doing the right half of it, so we're going to be going from 0, negative 4 to 0, 4. Remember to parametize, um, basically, to get, to get a circle, you can use x equals cosine t, y equals sine t. Um, here we want the radius of the circle to be 16, so we'll have to use the parameter 4 cosine t and y equals 4 sine t. <clears throat> and remember, um, we could write this as x over 4 equals cosine t, y over 4 equals sine t. Remember the trig identity, sine squared plus co cosine squared equals 1, um, or equivalently cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So we would get x squared over 16 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. You could multiply both sides by 16 and you would get x squared plus y squared equals 16. So that's certainly the correct um, the correct parametization um, of the x and y coordinate. Likewise, notice if we start this at t um, at negative pi over 2, if we plug negative pi over 2 in, that'll start us at the point 0 comma negative 4 and notice if I let it range up to a value of pi over 2, that'll take me to the point 0, 4, and it will trace along um, the right side of the curve. Okay, so these are going to be my parameters, and this is going to be my time interval, so that's going to be important. Okay, so, so it says using our previous formula there, it says what we're going to get is, okay, so we have to integrate. We're going to integrate from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Um, we replace x with its parametization. So x is going to get, become 4 cosine t. Um, y is going to become 4 sine t. But again, that's to the fourth power here. And then it says we have to calculate. Um, Remember, underneath the curve, we have to take the derivative of x with respect to t squared. So if I take the derivative of x, I'm going to get negative 4 sine t squared. If I take the derivative of y with respect to t squared, I'm going to get 4 cosine t squared dt. And that's now the setup of our integral. And this is now what we're going to have to try to grind down and integrate. So. We'll see if we can't do this without too much trouble. Um, okay, so it says we'll get negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Okay, so there's a 4. I'm going to pick up another 4 to the 4th. So I'm going to get 4 to the 5th cosine t times sine to the 4th t 
Underneath the square root, notice I'm going to get a 16 sine squared and a 16 cosine squared. I could factor the 16 out and make it sine squared t plus cosine squared t dt. And remember, if you have something under a square root, you can just pull it out. So the 16 I'm going to pull out, it's going to come out as another 4. But if I multiply that by the 4's that I have out front, I'll get a 4 to the 6th power left over. So at this point, I'm left with sine squared plus cosine squared underneath the radical. But we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is just 1. So really, I'm left with just 1 underneath the square root, which is nice because the square root of 1 is just 1. So really, my whole integral just turns into um, the integral from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 of uh, cosine t times sine t, which is nice because this is relatively straightforward to integrate. I can let u equal sine t. The derivative of that will be cosine t dt. Okay, so now when I go to integrate this, I have to change my limits of integration. I'll pull a 4 to the 6th out front. Well, we know that sine of negative pi over 2, if I change my limits of integration, that gives us negative 1. Um, if I plug in pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is positive 1. Um, again, u is equal to sine, so I'll get u to the 4th. And then I have my du taking care of the cosine t dt term. So I've just got 4 to the 6th, u to the 4th times du. Well, OK, I can integrate that now. That's 4 to the 6th times u to the 5th over 5, evaluated from negative 1 to positive 1. So my pin's dying here. Um, so let me give myself a little more room. <coughs> Okay, so if I calculate this integral now, okay, well, that's easy enough to do. I'll get 4 to the 6th. If you plug in 1, we'll get 1 fifth minus the lower limit. <coughs> if I plug negative 1 in for you, I'll get negative 1 raised to the 5th, which is negative 1 fifth. So I get 4 sixth. Inside the brackets, I'll get 1 minus negative 1, or positive 2 fifths. And you could multiply this out. I'm going to leave it alone. So it says your final answer is 4 to the 6th times 2 fifths. That'll be the value of that particular line integral. OK, I hope this little example makes some sense. There's some tricky things. You know, obviously, coming up with the parametrization is usually one of the hard parts. After that, it's just kind of plugging things into the formula. You know, the other part is going to be whatever the integral turns into. Obviously, that could be tricky to integrate. So, all right, I hope this example helps. Um, if not, feel free to post some comments underneath the video, and hopefully we can make some sense out of it.